All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the round nine tips. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already round nine. The season's really getting away from us. Kind of want to almost say, slow down, you know, I want to kind of enjoy the season. Uh, but then when I say that, I kind of remember that I'm an Eagles fan and, you know, our season's going to start in late November of the draft anyway. So, no, but it's good stuff. Still enjoying the season uh, so far. And it's interesting to see, you know, the ladder starting to settle now. We seem to have our consensus, maybe top three teams in the competition so far. But I still feel like there's a little bit of water to go under the bridge between now and the rest of the season. I'm going to do a power rankings video this time next week, hopefully. I have been sloppy on my round reviews as well. But again, this was just a round where I just didn't get to see much footy and uh, didn't have the time to upload it. Video. So this week is just going to be the tips uh, and probably a live stream this weekend as well, I hope. It was a relatively good round of tipping for me. I scored eight out of nine, uh, which was pretty handy. In fact, no one scored the perfect nine because uh, the one I got wrong and I think everyone else got wrong was Gold Coast beating Fremantle. Very few people would have predicted that. And as such, no one got the perfect nine. Uh, even though I had eight correct tips though, I was still ranked 31st overall in the round. So we did have one clear winner and that was Suva for seven uh, with a score of eight correct tips and he had the closest margin of 11 so well done Suva but the overall winner of the competition is someone called Hendog for the second week running who scored eight tips again this round to extend his total score to 62 which puts him one in the lead overall I'm fairly happy with my ranking moving back into 171st I still want to crack that top 100 or dare I say even top 50 so bit of work to do but for now well done to both the winner this week Suv and well done Hendog again I don't want to even talk about fantasy and how average my team is going at the moment, but we will shout out the leader who again for the second week in a row, Nathan Cowley Cooper with Primetime Ballers. He's leading the competition with 2185, 10 points a game, better than second place James English. So that is pretty tight at the top, but well done to Nathan. This week upcoming, it's going to be uh, it's going to be another doozy round. I reckon there's a few that you know seem like simple tips, and then there's a few others, particularly that Friday night game, where I think it's really really even and hard to call. So it will be another round that separates the men from the boys. Before we get into it, I will shout out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, Manscaped.com, for all their wonderful support, and they produce really good products around the male grooming space. So if you need a body hair trimmer, you can get the Lawnmower 4.0. It's a waterproof ceramic bladed body hair trimmer that uh, reduces nicks and all your other sort of potential grooming mishaps but on top of that you get a range of other male grooming products as well like you know ball wipes deodorants they even sell boxes so do yourself a favor go check out the website and you can use our code truefooty20 you get 20 percent off and free shipping on their great products so would appreciate you checking them out and helping the channel but also getting yourself some great products so here we are looking at the squiggle ladder. We have one undefeated team still, Melbourne. Almost tired of speaking about them at this rate with Brisbane moving into outright second with Fremantle's shock loss on the weekend. Down the bottom, you've got West Coast still languishing uh, with North Melbourne there in Essendon and GWS proving to be not much better than them, frankly, from what I've seen so far. Although, let's be honest, they're still a fair bit better than West Coast. A little bit of a glut in the middle there, as you'd expect, with uh, with it being interesting to see. I think, I think there's probably like four or five teams clamoring for that eighth spot. The Bulldogs and Port Adelaide have overcome pretty poor starts to the season to be right back in the mix and leapfrog Collingwood in there as well. And Gold Coast won't, won't quite go away. They've been plucky this year. Four and five is a good record. But anyway, let's get into the first game of the round, which for me is probably the hardest one to tip. Carlton hosting Sydney at Marvel Stadium. This is an interesting one. The Blues have won four of their last five and Sydney have won three of their last five with a fortnight that was a little bit regrettable with a fairly average loss to Brisbane and then a poor loss to the Gold Coast Suns. Even though Gold Coast have beaten Fremantle and Sydney in recent weeks, overall still not a great run of form, although they did smash the lowly Essendon last week. I'm not too concerned about their poor fortnight, to be honest. I think, you know, good teams have lapses. And for whatever reason, Sydney seemed to be Gold Coast bunny at the moment as well. And But Carlton are putting up some fairly respectable form, in my opinion. I know GWS have been fairly average this year, but uh, there's a few key injuries there for Carlton, like Mackay and Pitney, Mitch McGovern. I think structurally, you know, Carlton's had a few hits uh, on their radar, but they're still they're still playing some pretty good footy. So I, I'm really torn on who's going to win this game. Usually when I go into a video, I have some idea of who I'm going to tip. And I haven't decided yet. I got a funny feeling Sydney's going to win, to be honest. I hate to be that guy because I feel like, you know, there's people in the comments saying I never tip Carlton. You know what? I'm just going to bite the bullet. I think Sydney will win, to be honest. I don't know why. It's more of a gut feel. 12 points. Then you have Geelong hosting Port Adelaide down at Cardinia Park this weekend, which is traditionally a formidable sort of task for any particularly interstate side to get there. But I feel like Port play all right there. And Geelong's form in recent weeks 
has been uh, fairly patchy, to be honest, with three losses out of the last five to St. Kilda, Fremantle, and Hawthorne in that mix with big wins over some average teams in GWS and North Melbourne. And you could make an argument that they're a little bit flat track at the moment, Geelong. Look really good when their opponent's weak, uh, but when seriously challenged, they uh, they haven't looked up to it. And I do think Port Adelaide are capable of bringing a serious challenge to this game. They've won their last four games in a row. They turned it around with that big win over West Coast. Since then, they've beaten St. Kilda, the Bulldogs, and then a big win away from home against North Melbourne. So their list is looking a bit fitter, and uh, I think they're carrying a few less injuries than they were earlier. Earlier in the season. That being said, I think we'll I think we'll still get a typically good Geelong home performance this week. I don't I don't think they'll drop two in a row at GMHBA. So while I do think there is potential upset for this, definitely I don't think Port Adelaide has been playing worse than Geelong in the last few weeks, to be honest. I still think I'll go with the home team to break Port Adelaide hearts. Then the Bulldogs host the Gold Coast Suns at Mars Stadium, um, a ground where the Bulldogs just lost recently to the Adelaide Crows, who currently sit in 14th on the ladder. But the Dogs looked a little bit better last week after an average performance against Port. They smashed Collingwood by 48 points. And again, they've been up and down. They haven't been terrible this season, but some of their performances have been pretty lackluster. And then at times they've looked really good as well. So it's hard to get a read on them. And you come up against Gold Coast, who have had you know a really, really good fortnight after a string of average performances anyway to beat Sydney in Sydney and then to annihilate Fremantle uh, you have to give them a lot of credit for that so there is an argument to be made that Stewie Jew is definitely having progress it was it was an odd sort of game I think the, the conditions sort of didn't help Fremantle I mean I know there's two teams playing out there too but it, it was a weird game where Fremantle had almost doubled the inside 50s and, and Gold Coast absolutely smashed them on the scoreboard so while it was a very good performance and, and I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing from Gold Coast I don't think I'm convinced enough to think they'll do it three weeks in a row so I will tip the Western Bulldogs to win this by 25 points. Then you have a fairly simple tip, in my opinion, North Melbourne versus Melbourne at uh, at Marvel Stadium. And there is a Melbourne loss coming, but I don't think it'll be this week. Melbourne have just come off a uh, fairly compelling win against the West Coast Eagles in Perth. I think the Eagles sort of challenged them enough uh, from watching it. Obviously, Melbourne didn't hit top gear, but there were moments where you felt like there was a bit of resistance, which um, that's how far the, the bar has dropped for West Coast. We just see a minimal effort and we're like, oh, geez. <laughs> that being said, coasted to a 74 point win and uh you know it's, it's hard to imagine them dropping this particular game because north melbourne have been really really poor um with a 69 point loss i think it was against pot adelaide last week they're looking every bit a wooden spoon team it's just the fact that west coast exists at the moment uh that casts some doubt on that but i know upsets happen in footy but i haven't seen anything from north this year to suggest to me that they're capable of pulling this win out of their ass so i'm going to say melbourne win this convincingly by you know 54 points Richmond then play Essendon in the Dreamtime game at the MCG. This will be a, uh, of course, it'll be a fascinating contest just because of the fact that it's a Dreamtime game and these are always interesting clashes. But Richmond have come off a pretty good three-game stretch um, with their win against West Coast sort of starting, being the catalyst for a good stretch of form, 109 points in Perth. Then they've beaten Collingwood fairly easily and then beaten Hawthorne as well. And those two teams aren't easy beats and they've sort of, in my opinion, sort of entrenched themselves as a finals quality team at the moment, but they've been erratic this year so we'll put a pin in that for now and Essendon have won just the one game from their last five getting belted by Sydney last week after a good win against Hawthorne the week before and it's hard to have any confidence in them but that being said these are two fairly erratic teams historically Essendon is capable of winning this game but I think Richmond on the current form that we're seeing they've I think they've built some momentum they're going to be far too good I'm going to say they win this by 34 points Then we have Adelaide hosting St. Kilda at Adelaide Oval on uh, what I presume will be the Saturday night game. Adelaide have uh, kind of struggled in the last three weeks after a couple of good wins over Richmond and the Western Bulldogs. They got smashed at home to the Giants. Then they got smashed in Melbourne to Carlton. Then last week, having their colours lowered to a very good side in Brisbane. So no real shame in that, but it's the last three weeks that have kind of, we've seen a genuine drop off from their intensity. On the other hand, St Kilda sort of overcame uh, a couple of losses. The Port Adelaide loss three weeks ago was really disappointing. Then they uh, they had the benchmark of the competition against Melbourne last week where they fell fairly short. And then to beat Geelong, I think, is a good step for them. I know there's some doubt about how good Geelong's playing at the moment, but still, they're a team that you think will settle somewhere in the finals. And for St Kilda to beat them by 10 points suggests that St Kilda are well and truly in that mix as well. As such, Adelaide are certainly good enough for an upset here. And I, uh, I don't say that lightly. I just think Adelaide... Adelaide are very, very capable of beating some good teams. When you contrast that, you know, with Essendon at the moment, GWS, obviously North Melbourne and West Coast, I think Adelaide 
who are slightly above them, actually have the ability to beat good teams randomly. That being said, it's hard to back their form at the moment, so I think I'm going to tip conservatively and say St Kilda should win this by 20 points, but I could see it being a good game. I think Adelaide has it in them to take it up to the Saints. Then you have a bottom four clash between the GWS Giants and the mighty West Coast Eagles at uh, at the Giants Stadium, and this is a genuine bottom four clash between two very average teams. Obviously, you'd have to think GWS a fair bit better than West Coast, um, who, yeah, I think I think we all know how West Coast are playing at the moment. Starting with the Giants, they've had a fairly average run of certainly at least the last five. They had one randomly good win over Adelaide in Adelaide, which stands out like dog's balls because around that, the form has been pretty poor. I thought they were poor against Melbourne where they got smashed. They lost by 17 to St Kilda, which is respectable on paper, and then a bad loss to Geelong at Canberra where they lost by 53 points and then going down last week by five goals to the Blues. So I don't really need to sell you on how poor GWS has been. They've lost their coach. Uh, I know he's sort of sort of a mutual termination, but obviously, you know, he was told he wasn't going to be the coach, you know, past this year. So new coach as well might sort of reinvigorate things and we, we might see a spirited performance from the Giants. I'm personally hoping not. Obviously, being an Eagles fan, um, you know, there's not too many chances we're going to have for an actual win this year. And, you know, even though it's an away game, it's a bottom four team we're playing against. So I will go into this with some optimism because the last fortnight have obviously been against Brisbane and Melbourne and we had absolutely no hope of winning that but having said that the Eagles are in a serious position here where they may be required to use waffle top-ups again and it's not because of COVID it's literally because we've got I think about 15 confirmed injuries and a number of other players out there's no injury excuse it's just compounding the fact that they're already an average team to begin with and uh, we're going to struggle to field a team this week so I'll always believe there's a chance but GWS should win this game by five goals you'd think Then we have Hawthorne versus the Brisbane Lions down in Tasmania at Launceston. And uh, the Hawks are another team coming off a bit of a horror run after a bright start to the season with losses against Richmond, Essendon, Melbourne, and Sydney. So a bit of a mixed bag teams there. Some of them are good, some of them are average. And they really, really need a good performance to sort of reinvigorate that belief again and and staunch the bleeding because this season might get away from them soon. And unfortunately, they're coming up against the Brisbane Lions. They've won five on the trot. They beat Adelaide easily. They beat West Coast very easily. They beat Sydney in Sydney, which is a great win. Big win over their crosstown rivals, the Suns, and a win over Collingwood the week before that. So they haven't really put a foot wrong. The last time these two sides met, Hawthorne did beat them in Tasmania. That being said, I don't think I'll predict it to happen again. I think the Lions are are too good. There is certainly an upset potential here because I think Hawthorne can be, you know, up and down, particularly in Tasmania. They're hard to predict. So I'll say Brisbane win this uh, by 21 points, but it's not an absolute certainty. Then the final game of the round is Fremantle playing Collingwood in uh, in my live ladder. That is third versus 11th. Fremantle obviously very disappointing in the in the Gold Coast or on the Gold Coast last week, uh, going down by about six goals in a wet low scoring game and as I said when talking about Gold Coast it was a strange game where Fremantle had far more inside 50s uh, but couldn't generate any scores whatsoever. For me of course there's a temptation to, to write a bit of a, a anti-Fremantle campaign but honestly I, I don't think there's too much to read into that. I said the same thing about St Kilda versus Port Adelaide sort of gave St Kilda the benefit of the doubt because of the conditions sometimes it's just hard to play your style and it's not necessarily indicative of, of that team's brand and how, how well they can adapt it so disappointing but uh, I think it's one that they can shake off because they played some really good footy. Collingwood, on the other hand, have been a bit more of a mixed bag over the last five. They've lost to Brisbane, they've lost to Richmond, and they've lost to the Western Bulldogs with a couple of wins over the Gold Coast Suns and Essendon there. So it actually hasn't been a terrible run. There's some good opponents in there and uh, some average ones as well. But Collingwood is sort of settling in that mid-table sort of region of the ladder. They're capable of some very good football, although at the moment they look a little bit removed from that, particularly against the Bulldogs. They looked a fair way off the mark, even though the Bulldogs currently sit outside the top eight. So I respect Collingwood as being good enough to to cause an unlikely upset in this game. That being said, I don't think Fremantle will play that poorly two weeks in a row. It'd be funny if they did, but uh, but let's be honest. I think I think Fremantle have deserved um, being the heavy favourite in this game. To be honest, I, I think they'll win by a good five goals. To be honest, but. I'd love to see a close game. So that is it for uh, this particular round. And uh, as you can see on my live predictions, we still got the same top three, Melbourne, Brisbane, Fremantle. And uh, it looks like I've got Sydney sitting in the top four at the end of this round due to their win over Carlton. But of course, that could be Carlton if uh, if they win this game. On the other end of the ladder, GWS climb out of the bottom four after beating the West Coast Eagles. But we still see that same sort of mix uh, between, you know, seventh and 11th on the ladder. There's not too much movement in this particular round, but not much margin for error because there's quite a few teams there that I think are capable of playing finals this year. So 
That's it, guys. Those are my thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you think will happen. What tips do you think I got wrong? Where would you go differently? And of course, you know, your upsets and games of the round. I think I'll say the game of the rounds will either be Carlton and Sydney. I could also see it being Geelong and Port. And the potential upset could be Hawthorne over Brisbane. But it is hard to imagine. Brisbane are a damn good side. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying the content. And uh, we will probably be doing a stream for GWS versus Eagles. I do enjoy doing the away Eagles games, live streams. It's great to have you on board and uh, watch my club absolutely capitulate. So can't wait, guys. And I'll see you then.